Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of Keem Crash Course, we're going to be looking at some sample questions from the subject of chemistry. So chemistry is one of the important subjects that will be asked in the Keem exam, and therefore it's very important for you to be practicing it in detail. So we'll be looking at some questions and how to solve them in detail. So let's start off. The linkage of the two monosaccharide units in lactose are is C1 of the one glucose with C2 of another glucose, C1 of one glucose with C4 of another glucose, C1 of glucose with C4 of galactose, C1 of gla galactose with C4 of glucose, C1 of galactose with C2 of glucose. So this here is the question. Now, for those of you who don't know how lactose is formed, this is an image to help you out with that. So lactose is basically a disaccharide formed by galactose and glucose. So therefore, options A and B turn out to be incorrect. Now, whenever we're um, uh, naming carbons in a particular closed chain, we make sure that um, um, we start it off from the oxygen here and then we name it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in concentric order and then 6. So this is galactose, then we have for glucose you have 1 here, 2 here, the third carbon here, the fourth here, the fifth here and the sixth up here. Now if you notice uh, when it comes to um, carbs we usually have a glycosidic bond between two sugar units, which is where a water molecule is taken out. So between the first carbon and the f of galactose and the fourth carbon of glucose, there is a possibility of one of these glycosidic bonds forming. So therefore option C turns out to be incorrect because it says C1 of glucose, and option E turns out to be incorrect because it says C2 of galactose. C2 lies here and C1 of galactose lies here. There's no way you can form the bond between them. The closest carbon atoms are C1 of galactose and C4 of glucose. So therefore option D is the right option. So that's how you form a lactose molecule. Next question. Which of the following vitamin is responsible for increased fragility of RBCs? Is it B1, E, K, C or B6? Now. When, it, when you're talking about responsible for increased fragility of RBCs, we're talking about a deficiency disorder. So um, increased fragility of RBCs is caused by the deficiency of which of these vitamins. So <clears throat> how do we solve this question? Well, if you look at increased fragility, um, it's, it is cured by what we call tocopherol therapy. So this is the therapy that we uh, use for uh, curing increased fragility of RBCs in order to make them better. Now if you look at the first name, tocopherol, tocopherol is actually the name for vitamin E. So if you have a deficiency of vitamin E, you'll find increased fragility of RBCs and the treatment is to uh, you know, to have an increase in vitamin E in the diet in order to cure the fragility of RBCs. So option B is the right option. Option A, B1 turns out to be thiamine, um, which is use, which is, you know, useful for goiter. Vitamin K, option C is phytonadione which is especially helpful for hair, hair loss and all that. Vitamin C is ascorbic acid and its deficiency disorder is scurvy. So option D is also incorrect. Vitamin B6 is pyridoxin. So therefore option E also turns out to be incorrect. The right option is option B, vitamin E, because RBCs, when they have increased fragility, they're treated by tocopherol therapy, 
which uh, makes sure that enough vitamin E is into the diet in order to uh, reverse the disorder. So therefore, increased fragility is a deficiency disorder of the vitamin E, which is tocopherol. Next question. The three bases present both in DNA and RNA are guanine, cytosine, and uracil, adenine, guanine, and thymine, adenine, guanine, and uracil, adenine, guanine, and cytosine, adenine, thymine, and uracil. So, how do we solve this question? Well, for that, let's list out the four bases of both DNA and RNA. For DNA, the bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. For RNA, turns out to be adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. So thymine and uracil are different bases because uracil, uh, I mean thymine has an extra uh, methyl unit compared to uracil. And the other bases are all the same. So therefore, adenine, guanine, and cytosine are the three bases which are present both in DNA and in RNA. So option D turns out to be correct. In all the other options, either thymine or uracil, or uh, both of them are mentioned, which is not present in both of the um, nucleic acids. So usually in questions, you, ha you have the opposite question being asked, but that that is what is the different I mean what uh, which of these is found in DNA but not in RNA or which of these is found in RNA and not in DNA so that's what's usually asked in this question though we're asking the reverse the, the bases that are present in both DNA and RNA so those are adenine guanine and cytosine thymine is found only in DNA and uracil is found only in RNA next question the major contributor to global warming is methane, carbon dioxide, ozone, water vapor, CFCs. Now it's important to remember that all of these in one way or another are greenhouse gases. They all store heat and help the atmosphere become warm. So we need to find out which of these is the major contributor. Now if you look at CFCs, uh, them being a greenhouse gas is just a side effect their main problem is that they deplete the ozone layer so they are so in so in a way they are not major contributors to global warming so option e is incorrect option d water vapor option c ozone option b carbon dioxide option a methane so you have option c ozone which forms the ozone layer in the stratosphere. However, in the troposphere, it's actually a greenhouse gas. So it's not a major contributor either. So option C is incorrect. What about option D, water vapor? Now, water vapor is basically the gaseous form of water. And it also has been present for, you know, uh, ever since the Earth formed. However, water vapor, it, has a very small, it only occupies a very small percentage of the atmosphere. So therefore it isn't really um, a major contributor when it comes to global warming. It may be a minor contributor but not a major one. So option D is incorrect. Now when it comes to major contributor there are two things that you need to know, that, that you need to um, consider. One is the concentrated concentration of that particular gas and the other is the breakdown of that gas. If you look at methane, methane is in fact the second most important carb greenhouse gas. It actually uh, warms the atmosphere a lot more than CO2 does. However, it breaks down easily. So it does not become a major contributor to global warming. So option A is incorrect. The right, the most appropriate answer is option B, carbon dioxide or CO2. Now why is that? First of all, it has the highest concentration of all the greenhouse gases, 0.03%. Secondly, its concentration is, get, is being increased due to human activities. 
and that and also it has a low breakdown because uh, even though if you stop all the CO2 emissions the existing CO2 would warm the atmosphere many times over even though the warming ability of the gas itself is lower than methane so therefore option B carbon dioxide turns out to be the major contributor to global warming now let's look at the final question of the day this is a match type question we need to find out which of these is incorrectly matched you have now let's look at each of the options alpha and beta glucose are considered anomers basically anomers are isomers with different orientation now when it comes to glucose you have an oxygen and then you have carbon here a carbon there and then you have a CH2OH over here and you have OH then you have H then you have OH and when it comes to alpha glucose you find that the OH for the first carbon is at the bottom if for beta the first carbons OH would be at the top so that's what makes them anomers so therefore option A turns out to be true it's correctly matched which makes it incorrect so when here we're asked to find out which of these is incorrectly matched so if you so if the match is correct then we consider the option incorrect Amylose starch. Amylose is one of the two chains forming starch. So therefore, again, they are correctly matched. So the option is incorrect. Glycogen is found in animal starch. So again, that's a right match. Option C is incorrect. Cellulose is a polymer of beta D-glucose and again that's the reason why we can that's the reason why humans can't digest it because of the form of glucose that it's in so option D is also incorrect because the match is correct so that makes option E the right answer but let's look at it why is it an incorrect match myosin is a muscle protein which is you know constructed in long chains however in this particular match it's it's set as a globular protein which looks something like this whereas myosin looks more like a chain so therefore option E is correct because myosin is not a globular protein it's more of a of a linear protein so therefore option E is the right option because the two because the option is incorrectly matched so again it's one of the most important types of questions the type of question where you need to find out the wrong statement instead of the right one so we need to keep an eye out for the question itself whether it says incorrectly or correctly matched so that concludes this episode of Keem Crash Course. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get more of our useful and interesting content, then don't forget to hit the bell icon, the notifications icon present below the video. So until the next webisode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.